If you're following along with this project, you know that I am remodeling a rental house, getting it ready to sell. And you can see that this is the bathroom floor that I just gutted out the old bathroom and I'm mortaring the floor and putting down hardy backer to uh, make a new nice flat level bed for a new tile floor and tub. I've also got the walls torn out to put new Duroc up on the walls and tile those. And then you see that I have a new sink there with a new faucet and I'm trying to find a suitable faucet for the shower to be compatible with that. And then last you can see the four choices I'm looking at for granite countertops. Okay, let's uh, get on to the installation video. Enjoy. We have the world famous unknown mechanic busily trying to fit this last piece of hardybacker into position. This is attempt number one. Okay, that's a technical term there, crap. And uh, so that's what we make an attempted fit like before the actual fit so that we can make these fine tuning adjustments. So I'm just going to take a quarter inch off of that and we'll be set. And I know you didn't want to do that, but I made him put that extra cut in there because he wanted to undercut the baseboard and I said, mm, yeah. And it can be a loose fit, it's fine. And we'll just get mortar splashed in there. And oh, by the way, peel off that sticker. Uh, or I can get it with the six inch trowel. So there you go, we had to dismantle the trim around the door here and take the pocket door out. And you see there is the pocket for the door there. And there is the track for the door, and oh, the dollies aren't on the door yet. So here is the trim for the door, taken up very carefully. Where'd you put the door? Oh, out there. Why'd you put it out there? Because be, if we put it in there, it'd be in the way. No, no, well, no, I'm just put it in the dining room because it's not going to go back on for a few days. So this one here is, I no, it's not the heavy duty door. It's got the lightweight dollies on top, but that's all they had back then when I bought it. So here you see Dave uh, trimming the fit on this, and we are using a uh, diamond blade for the hardy back so that it cuts, doesn't wear out like a regular blade will. And the sun kind of softened that up, but gonna have to get that paper out of there too. And that'll probably uh, just come up with a um, six inch trowel scrapage later. So anyway, here you see there is the old bathtub, one half, there is the other half. And we have one extra piece of hardy back left over, so that's good. I get back ten bucks on that. Okay. So you have to get that paper off of there because mortar will uh, stick to it, yeah, but the paper will degrade and then you're going to have your tile lift off. And you don't want that. You want that tile on there forever and that's why you clean up the board. And you're set. Okay. So I believe we are ready to put that in now. How am it? 
Oh, right. is it still long? Right here. Yeah, shoot. All right, just a little fine tuning. Almost got it. Is uh, yeah. You probably have so close. Yeah. And we can't smack it because it'll screw up the frame. So here we are looking at, that is the old 3 inch cast iron pipe that went up to the second floor and in the second floor over there is where a uh, bathroom used to be. So we have this uh, 3 quarter inch L gauge copper going up into the attic space there too so if it ever gets done it could be turned into a bathroom again. And uh, so that was one of the things I did is I provisionally ran pipes up there for the bathroom. Okay, but you see how nice everything is fitting in here? All we gotta do is make that little piece there and uh, get this here piece mortared in. $10 says it fits. I'll take that bit because I can't even remember which way it goes. <laughs> I'll take that bit. Perfect. Didn't drop down. Look at that. Oh, it did. What? It's right here. The, the linoleum now. Well, yeah, it's right next to the linoleum. So, I'm going to cut the linoleum. Mm -hmm. How close are we? Well, this is like a sixteenth. Yeah. Good enough. Make it a clean cut. Are well, you going to reuse this well, linoleum? Well, no, but um, I don't want, uh, want to have a clean cut there, though. Because we don't know what's going to happen with it. I mean, it is going to get snap lock over it. I just don't know how well we need to have that. So clean is always good. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Watch your foot on the toilet thing. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, so anyway, um, hard backer went down there very nicely. It leveled out the floor a bit because we built up the depth of the mortar on this side here. And then on this side here, it had a uh, little bit thicker one inch plywood all the way over to the wall there. So, okay, let us uh, continue on. We got a mortar mortar in that piece now. The hardybacker is all mortared and screwed down. We're looking at tile that I'm thinking of using. The one inch tile for the floor and the charcoal tile for the surround in the tub. These are left over from a job about 25 years ago so it'll be nice to be able to use these. Okay boys and girls you can see how nice flat and smooth that skin coat on the floor is <clears throat> we have taped all this joints you see the little tape line there and another one over there but we have a nice flat smooth surface over all of the uh, hardy backer so then tomorrow it'll be dried and we will come in with uh, the um, 10 inch flat trowel, mud trowel, and we will just lightly go over everything to knock down any high points. And as you can see, there's a couple of little high points in there. So we'll just knock those down. And then we're going to put on three coats of Red Guard, and that will provide a water seal to the floor. And it will also uh, provide a um, separation layer so that if somebody in the future wants to put down more tile, different tile, they can just um, break it away from the red guard. So that is a pretty good feature to have. But yeah, this uh, bathroom is going to look pretty sweet when it's all done. We have the new bathtub is out in the truck. Let me show you that real quick. 
pardon the mess out here. It's a work construction zone after all. And there you see the new Kohler 876, I think it's a bellwether tub. So it has a sloped foot and a sloped back. Very comfortable soaking tub. Uh, we did go look for a shower control valve today, but we couldn't find anything that we liked or that I liked. And so we're going to go and see if I can find something up at Home Depot along with a couple of other things. Okay, I'm going to stop looking at this because that light is just blinding. <clears throat> Miss your unknown mechanic is... I'm still seeing spots in my eyes running around and putting some patches in the walls here where they need it. <clears throat> so here are some of the old appliances. The laundry unit will stay. And uh, I think I'm going to probably give that stove to the unknown mechanic. And uh, he could probably have that fridge and microwave too. Because uh, he's got places that intermittently need new stuff. So anyway, um, things are going good. I've kind of decided against refinishing the floors here because... Um, the fur floors, they've got some pretty wide gaps. And uh, here is one of the bullet holes. It's like a 22 or something. And uh, I know there's two more in here, but I can't uh, seem to find them. Just little interesting tidbits of information. Okay. So then the next thing I have to do is... Another thing I have to do is fix this front porch. So it needs some help. I painted this thing just like three years ago and the paint just did not hold up. <clears throat> so anyway, and there you can see my pride and joy Japanese maple tree there. It is huge. It's about five feet tall. And the interesting story about that is it was given to me back in 1984 and it sat and looked like it was dead on the deck of my apartment out at Alki Beach. And so it sat for like two years and then one morning I looked at it while having my cup of coffee and I thought, whoa, look at that, there's a leaf. So the thing wasn't dead and uh, it's a good thing that I was too lazy to throw it away. Anyway, this is what it is now from 1984. Looked like a dead bush for a couple of years and now it is one of the fullest, most perfectly formed beautiful Japanese maples anywhere. Okay, let's get hopping. Oh, and then I have to trim this tree here. You can see how it's beginning to pull on the power wires. My neighbor planted that about 20 years ago, and he said, Hey, can I plant this? These things don't grow very tall. Well, now look at it. It's got to be 30 feet tall. It's at least two stories, three stories. Okay, let's uh, get hopping. Gonna be very excited to see how this is when it's all wrapped up. Okay. Okay, these are samples of granite that I could use for a countertop. This one here is a matte finish, no gloss. The rest of them have gloss. This one I kinda like because it has that little bit of red in it. This one here, other people like because of these flecks of shininess to it. So you see how looking at it at different angles brings out different features. 
So this one here is very neutral, it doesn't show water spots. This one here, it's got some colors to it that are nice. And this one here is, uh, I kind of like this because it has a lot of colorations to it. So it opens the door for a lot of uh, opportunities for paint schemes and other things. But this one here could be good too. So I'm going to have to think about it. And of course, there's the good old green countertop for Micah. Okay.